We're back with a new episode of the top 30 non-sports sales on eBay. Uh, January is a pretty exciting month. We're looking at a low for the top 30 at $900 uh, with our highest sale going through 7,000. Now, if I missed any big sales in January, please let me know so that way I can optimize code for grabbing these results. It's still a little bit manual, but I'm trying to improve this uh, month over month. With that being said, let's start off this top 30 list. We're starting off with this 1962 Mars attack, the tidal wave. We have this in a PSA 8 old slab, sports cards forever. Sold this $911 with two bids. We can take a look at the back over here. Always see a pretty popular release in the 60s. This print sold for $950. Let's take a look at a little bit of the condition on it. So looks pretty solid. Um, there's a little bit of chipping down below over there. And uh, this guy is obviously a big Prince fan, whoever owned this card. So we have all that memorabilia over here and posters and stuff like that. Um, but not a bad looking copy as a lot of these do get chipped up pretty badly with the colored borders. Uh, this set has multiple colors, by the way. I have a ZZ Top, which I think is like a yellow or a red. Um, but with that over there, probably what, five, six grade. It's hard to tell what the centering, but it does look like it's off left to right. And obviously the card is not in. We have this Horrors of War Japanese Machine Enemy Air Pilot PSA 8. New label on this one. We don't have a picture of the back. 18 bids, $960 from the ninth inning. Another Horrors of War over here. So this one, and it's horizontal. So Devils Worshipping Koreans View Dogfights, which I guess I could have just read this eBay title there. Nice looking eight, again, a brand new label, $985, 29 bids from the ninth inning. The sale is, um, it's not great. This one sold for $1,000, but it says 1950 Elvis Presley PSA 8 rookie card. Ice graded pop one. Now, PSA messed these labels up. This is not a 1950 card. And I really wish they fixed this because people get scammed on this card all the time. Elvis didn't even have any music out in 1950. So... Not sure how that's possible, and obviously someone did not do their research at PSA before authorizing this. Um, but big issue with the music cards. Most of them aren't as bad as this gap, because I believe this card is from the late 50s or early 60s. But man, this, this confuses a lot of people, and this is not a rookie card. A crazy sale um, for an Elvis card, and this isn't even that rare of a card to find. AMT memorabilia, $1,009 on a Mars attack checklist over here, a PSE 6 as well. Um, taking a look at it, maybe it's some ink defects, but I mean, that's it's common for a lot of tops cards in general. You can load up on the back over here, and it, we have a clean checklist. Um, no marks on there, which is pretty hard to find. Yeah, $1,000 for that in A6. But I assume that's probably what the second most expensive card in the set. Correct me if, if I am wrong. Not an expert on it by any means. $1,009 also from AMT Memorabilia. 1966 Lost in Space. We have a PSA 10 Terror Strikes. Hug over there. Kind of scared. And this is what the back looks like. His wife was not at her post leaving Judy and Don West at the controls. First Superman card on the list, which there's actually a lot this month. PSA 7, Disaster at the Circus. Greg Morris cards, $1,035. Pretty sharp on the outside of things. Assume it's going to go to a registry owner. Another Superman rescue from a Rocky Reef, 1125. Seven in an old slab. We have two more Superman over here. We have one more Superman over here. 1940 Log Jam Peril, 1125 also for this seven. Again, there's going to be even more Superman on this list. 1977, 1977 Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Price is crossed off, but I saw there was a best offer accepted for 1120 $25. On to the core, Donald Trump. This one's sold straight up for $11.99. SGC 10. You guys can take a look at the back over here. Donald Trump once remarked that he would be a great U.S. arms negotiator with the Soviet Union. 
because it would take an hour and a half to learn everything there is to learn about missiles. Hopefully that did not demonetize the video. $1,200 was the final price on the Star Wars 1977 PSA 10. Some repairs for C-3PO. Our first historical figure over here from the Duke N76 set. Actually, one of my favorites out there. This one sold for $1,200. It's a PSA 7. Great Americans. Uh, this isn't one that I'm personally chasing after. There's a few others that I need to upgrade and stuff like that. But uh, this selling as a 7, I'm kind of scared for some of the cards that I have in my collection. Highest one that I have right now is the Mark Twain uh, Samuel Clemens. That is a PSA 6. But I paid up quite a bit for that one. We have another Superman over here. Fight in midair. Greg Morris cards. The set break had a lot of high grades, uh, which dominates the list. But uh, let's see if I can get this one over here. And another one. So the last card in the set, which this is the first time the last card um, populated one of these top 30 lists. I'm sure it will again in the future. Uh, but pretty low grade on that one, 1 1.5. And that one also sold for 12.25. Um, this is actually my first time looking at this card because I have not investigated that set. Uh, it looks like there's like a bunch of gum stains or gunk all over there and um, pretty rounded corners. So that's why it's the 1.5. I'm curious what the back. Oh, it's a pretty clean back. Um, obviously, there's some staining issues and stuff like that, but I'm not too sure how rare this is in like higher grades. I'm sure if there's like a three or four, I go for a few thousand. I, I don't know for sure. That's not my specialty. $1,300 was the best offer for this new wave Dave 1985 Garbage Pill Kids. And a little bit outside my comfort zone with these. But uh, I believe that there's like multiple images sometimes for the card numbers. That's why you have like A and B, I believe. And like there's some that are scarcer than others. Um, Something I should pick up over time. But uh and I, I collect more of the pre-war non-sports and historical figures. Autograph card over here. This one sold for $13.50. Darth Vader inspects the throttled ship. I don't know if I like that sticker though on the back. That's so large and um, it's right on the card. Yikes. Team 58 our uh, first Walt Disney over here. PSA 9. And then uh, 18 bids. This is from Siggy Cards. Some of the early Walt Disney cards. Although this is not rare by any means like that. Um, there's lots of these out there. But in the 9 grade, it's probably pretty tough. Another Superman over here. Superman versus Torpedo. Actually, I just covered this card. So I do apologize for including in here twice. I only have one card listed uh, once each time. But this one sold for $1,500. So I guess you can see a little bit of the price upgrade. Personally, I would rather have the two. I think this looks way nicer than that 1.5. No offense to that one for 12.25, but if I'm already dropping that much into a card, spend a little bit more, get a nicer copy. There's some staining right over there, but I think the eye appeal on this one looks like a four, at least on the front side of things. But do you know Superman again, a PSE 7, Superman's arch enemy. 17.77 and 99 cents from Greg Morris cards. This guy's set was amazing. Um, what do you know? Superman, once again, this actually sold best offer. $1,850 for this five. And it says Menace in Mine. No picture of the back. Always a pet peeve of my... I, I always want to see the front and the back of the cards if I'm going to purchase it. But uh, the seller did not do that. And it did sell. But it does look pretty nice from the front side of things. When I think of Garbage Pail Kids, this is the one that I think of. The Atom Bomb over here. Uh, PSA 9, crossed out, sold for $1,900. And I don't know if it's a high sale or kind of low sale for this one. Mars Attack, High Voltage Execution, number 48.5. This one sold straight up for $2,000. So after this one, which sold for $2,075, we're going to get a pretty big jump. I was like 50-50 on if I was going to include this one into the list. Um, but it's a sketch card, Disney Treasures, and um, it was 2003. So, I mean, we're still talking 20 plus years ago, which non-sports is, it's interesting if you want to say if something's vintage or not. I 
I don't know if I'd count this as vintage, but I just included in the video. Um, I do have to make fun of how they're storing this. I mean, this thing is literally a brick. Um, I say that because I've had cards stored like this before, before I realized how bad they were, but a pretty high sale for this one. And it's probably an earlier sketch card in the hobby. So we can see a pretty big jump on this one. It sold for $3,900. This was not something that I knew existed. So first off, it, it's pretty cool having all the Rolling Stones autographs on it. But we're talking about a promo card also from 1963. From what I've searched, at least from Stones cards, the, the more mainstream releases are 1965. Not to say they don't have any rare stuff from 65. Um, but this predates it from 1963. And then um, you can see over here. Another different songs. Watch out for the Rolling Stones new EP out before Christmas. All right, so I'm doing a little bit of research on this card because again, I wasn't too familiar with it. So I want to be your man. It says it was released in 1964. Not sure when it was officially released, but it says latest Deca releases. Come on, I want to be loved. I want to be your man and stoned. Um, maybe I can search these up. It was first recorded and released as a single by Rolling Stones and then recorded by the Beatles for their second album with the Beatles. Rolling Stones version. This is their second single on November 1, 1963. Brian Jones guitar. So this could be 1963, right? One of the 19 Danish single covers. Wow. So, I didn't know that song was uh, by both groups. This is really cool. I guess I could research this. Deca F11675. Wow, here we go. Look at that. Rolling Stones come on 1963 vinyl. So this uh, has a good chance of being the first Rolling Stones card. Could be things earlier, but I I personally won. And the fact that there's an autographed one out there, and I missed out on it, kind of makes me sad. But all right, not to go on a tangent. That was kind of cool. Let's uh, keep going through these lists. All right, um, every video we're gonna have one of these cards, just like we're always gonna have a Will's Walt Disney 1940 Superman PSA two 4300. Iconic card, not the rarest, but always sells two, three, four thousand dollars. And right now, where the non sports hobby is, that will always dominate. So here's our Superman for this month PSA 2. And uh, card number one. This was a huge Comsi sale, almost five thousand uh, dollars. Walt Disney right over here, PSA 8. It's got the not rare card by any means like that. And I think these have gone down a little bit, but I'm not too sure on like the eights and stuff like that. But there's a lot of mid grades that are populating still. And there's still tons over in Europe uh, that'll be over in the US. But obviously, Walt is one of the biggest historical figures in both uh, like US history as well as in general like cinema. So there's no doubt that this card will continue to be popular. And I think on our election, we talked about how this is kind of like the 33 Gaudi one of the roots of non-sports cards. Is it rare? No. Is it popular? Absolutely. And I think that's a good contention for that. I um I, I messed up this week. I apologize, guys, because this is another repeat card, but I should say this month. But 1962 Mars Attack, checklist a 7, uh, 54, 75. Only one bid, but it did sell. And that's from Sports Cards Forever. Lastly, our biggest sale of the week, Superman versus Torpedo, $7,100. That's that. <laughs> That's the last card of the list. I definitely did not uh, filter out correctly, but big sale. And I was alluding to like, I wonder what like a mid grade would do. Yeah, we now we know seventy one hundred dollars. But I do have some honorable mentions, so we'll go through those. So our first honorable mention over here. I actually thought this was kind of like a counterfeit slash reprint card that someone made and just got Sylvester Stallone to sign it. But um, look over here. This was actually distributed by his like clothing shop and I looked it up and um, 
They have a YouTube channel, everything with him unboxing stuff and opening it so and promoting it. So this is a, a legitimate company that built out this card. And um, I think they should probably add that to the slab because there's so many of these like artificial or like fake cards of celebrities out there. And it's hard to tell what's like kind of reputable versus like what's 100% counterfeit. And I first thought this card was a, a counterfeit card with a real autograph on it, which is a big issue right now with PSA. But uh, this is a real card that was distributed by the Stallone team. Up next, uh, some garbage pills, first series set. I'll show you some high grades. This one sold for $3,000. So full set sharp over here. I'm curious if someone will end up grading these. How they will do. Uh, some garbage pail boxes also, I think around $3,000 or something like that. Two full boxes with the wax packs in there. 1966 Batman. This was the best offer. I didn't see exactly what it ended up doing, but a lot of eights associated with that across the board. Oh, complete set, all PSA eights. So I wonder if someone did the math, like, it's worth more breaking it up or just keeping it together. Uh, but I assume getting all eights is pretty tough. And lastly, 1977 the Star Wars box. Just wanted to show that $5,000 essentially after taxes by Hoodies Collectibles, which I think they're a big box breaker or they own a card shop. I, I can't remember for sure. But yeah, that'll do it for this week uh, or for this month. Next month, I'll do a little bit better job of filtering out stuff. I apologize for those mistakes. And if you're brand new to the channel, make sure to subscribe because I'm posting a lot of content, especially on the non-sports side of things, because that's what I find interesting.